Thank you all for making the early morning on the first day here. Um, I think we have a great panel today to, to talk a little bit about the metaverse and, and the logic behind it and where's, where's the money to be made, I think, is, is another important question here. Um, I think to, to kind of level set, and I think this is important, is I'd love each one of you to just say what you believe the metaverse is because it's kind of an esoteric and it's a, it's a buzzword, but a lot of people kind of, what is it? So level set with who you are and, and what do you believe the metaverse is? Carlos, do you want to start? Hi, thank you all for being here. Um, from, from Media Pro, uh, I'm, I'm working in Media Pro, which is a, like a audiovisual traditional producer, and we are moving also to the Web3 and Metaverse new paradigm, um, trying to transform also the audiovisual industry to this new paradigm. Uh, what's the Metaverse for me? For me, the metaverse is an evolution of the internet that is overlapping the digital and the physical layers. And that's like the basic thing. And then also involving economy, also involving creators, and also involving new ways of distribution of the money, let's say, no? The value that RV is being created by the different players of these new ecosystems. This is for me the metaverse. By now. <laughs> Yes, I'm Alexis Bond. Um, I'm the CEO of Stillfront Group, which is a, a video games company with 22 uh, game studios across the world. Uh, we're publicly traded on the Swedish NASDAQ. Uh, and I also do a lot of angel investments. And actually, I was the first investor in one of the most popular metaverses, which is um, uh, the Sandbox, mm -hmm. uh, among, among other things. Uh, to me, the, the metaverse is actually uh, where your digital identity lives. Um, you know, you have your physical identity, you have your digital identity, and uh, one thing that is, um, that, we, uh, that is really fascinating is there's a whole generation coming up for whom the digital identity is actually more important than their actual their physical identity. Uh, so I think that's really what it is, and then through blockchain and all that, there's, um, there's a, a, an additional layer, uh, which is one of ownership, uh, which is also interesting that is coming into that. So ownership of digital things in, in, in the metaverse. Because, and I think that's really the big difference because metaverses have been around for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, Frederick and I have been building metaverses for decades uh, with our video games. So, so I think we, we, we just have to be a bit careful. So that's my definition. My definition is digital identity, asset ownership, digital asset ownership. Fred? Right, thank you. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> my name is Fred. I run a company, Paradox Interactive. And we're a publisher of uh, video games, mostly for the PC platform. Uh, we're also on the Nasdaq uh, Stockholm Exchange, we're neighbors there, and uh, like we said, we're both games publishers. So, now to me, the metaverse is, Alexis is touching on it, the digital identity online, but also a place where people meet and create things together. And I think a lot of what we see in our industry is the trend going towards actually the gamers creating things for other gamers. And uh, we as a company become more of a platform or a social meeting point uh, of the future. So. Also, where you actually meet your social connections, because it's so much easier to meet people with the same interests, uh, in, this in this case gaming, but also other types of much more specialized uh, interest. What I believe the metaverse is not is a be-all, end-all place where everyone goes to do everything, because th those days are over. Um, you can't create a place where everyone wants to be, because everyone's interests are super specialized and you want to engage more in the things that interest you, not have a bland like, idea of what, what, what the reality really is. So it will be interesting to see how it develops, for sure. I'm Chris Ebeling. I'm co-founder of Virtual Human Studio. We uh, make a play to earn game called Zed Run, which is a digital horse racing ecosystem. It's our contribution to the metaverse. <laughs> Uh, what is the metaverse? A great question. Um, I think we're still defining that. Uh, same way that we're still trying to you know, reach for the stars for Web3. We're, we're in a transition period now where it's Web2 going to Web3. I say we're Web2.3. And, and, and together, uh, we're going to get there. Uh, for me, the metaverse, though, is a digital layer which sits above and below reality. As a creative, it's using all these um, amazing technologies. You know, it's blockchain as an underlying uh, foundation for you know economics in, in the metaverse in this digital space and I agree with everything 
the three gentlemen here just said, it's about digital asset ownership, it's about identity, it's about community. It's a place where, you know, if you have kids or young ones in your family, you know they're spending a lot of time in this, these digital realms already. Fortnite, Call of Duties, Grand Theft Autos, and living these lives like Sims, you know. Second Life was a perfect example of Metaverse. Roblox is an even yeah. better one right now, which has sucked a lot of people's attention. So we're already there um, in the discords as well, on the Reddit pages. We're, we're, we're talking away, and, and it's going to be this digital extension where you have agency using emerging technologies, be it VR, mixed reality, or more advanced games, or you know, owning a digital resource. I mean, I think that leads to, to the next question is, everyone has a vision, and what do we need to do to reach that vision? What is the current roadblock that you envision to, to really embrace that digital persona, as you were mentioning? What do we, what's, what's missing in the ecosystem as of today? I don't know. I'll open oh, it up. Oh. Whoever wants to kind of a. <laughs> I think I think we just need to lead the charge and do what we're doing uh, collectively, and then also be communicating like these summits or other conferences. You know, uh, collaboration is key, uh, and and being you know, I said this to two young gentlemen yesterday who were uh, selling me their VR idea, and I said, look, you got to be, you got to risk it, and you got to make mistakes, and you got to fail forward, like. We don't know exactly what we're doing, but I think if you look backwards, you can see what works and where this evolution is going and where we're heading. So, you know, for us, uh, it's, it's creating games and an ecosystem and, yeah, learning from the mistakes we make. And yeah. <clears throat> Another thing I would say is uh, legal, uh, legal uh, issues <laughs> in general, because who owns what in the digital space? I mean, I left uh, Facebook uh, four years ago after reading through their end-user license agreement that I didn't agree with it, so I just decided to leave. And uh, I think that's a problem for a lot of people out there. Like, the, do I own my identity? Do I actually own my stuff? If I lose my stuff, what happens? So the more you invest in the games, the more time and the more money that you invest, the more sure you want to be that you have legal backup to what you do and that the, who owns what, I think, is one of the absolute key questions here. Yeah, I think regulation is a, is a big one. I think another one is also, quite honestly, the, the underlining technology um, of, of the blockchain, right? Uh, that, um, that is being used for a lot of this, for the ownership part of, of digital assets is frankly not very good. <laughs> uh, it's very slow. Uh, it's not user friendly. Uh, awesome. You, it's, it's supposed to be super secure crypto, and we've seen many, many things happen you know, to very popular large games where you know, money has disappeared. So we're really in the infancy, I think, of the, of the, of the technology there. There's also this, a lot of different blockchains you know, competing with each other, you know, layer ones, and then you have the layer twos, which build on top of the other blockchains. It's a bit of a mess if you're um, yeah. a developer. So I think that needs to basically harmonize, and that's happening. You know, we have some, some blockchains now that are, are really kind of you know, reaching points of scalability, and, where the, the wallets are much easier to, to, to use and for the players, they don't really re even realize they're, they're opening like a, uh, something within crypto. So, so, it's, it's, so there's that part. There's also, I think, the part where uh, I actually think that the gold rush of last year was bad. Uh, mm -hmm. You got a lot of you know, bad characters that came in, a lot of bad practices, you know, pre-sales of tokens for projects to disappear, all this sort of stuff. Uh, I think the, 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 the present massive correction that we're seeing here is actually a good thing. Beneficial. Because that's going to ma make a massive cleanup, and like only the serious people with the serious projects are going are gonna to be there. And, and, and that's what you're going to see. And I think the final thing that means what you need is that one or two projects that really are symbolic and really mm -hmm. are you know, solid and are a success and can show the way for the other kind of startups. And embraced by the general public. Yeah, and embraced by, by the general public. Yeah. Narrow group. yeah, I agree totally. Uh, I think there is a question related with usability, user experience, how you, if you are not a geek, how do yeah. you deal with this, all these strange things that are also with the crypto thing that people are like, wow, crypto, I'm not crypto, I, I, I'm frightened about crypto, and I think this is something that people have to digest. And it's, it's like, a, I always say that it's like a very young Lionel Messi with 16 years. It's very promising player, but we have to take some time because he's going to do very, very good things. But it needs 
some time. And another thing that I think many people in the traditional industry are waiting to happen is some kind of centralization of the decentralization because everything is really nice but really small. Yeah. And if you need to, to scale, you need some kind of centralization in the decentralization way. And this is a, a challenge too. I think we have to deal with scaling scarcity, centralizing decentralization, these kind of things that you say, wow, how are we going to do it? But we have to do it. Mm. So, so we shouldn't use Messi as an analogy in Madrid, but <laughs> the, the rest was perfect. Um, I had a question, and, and my question was like, social media, how's, how's, how's Facebook, the large social giants going to play out? But is it going to be a gaming metaverse is going to be mainly gaming or is it going to be um, social media? But looking at the panelists, and we're almost all gamers <laughs> or, or investing in gaming, I was like, I kind of know how that question is going to tilt. But um, I'd love to kind of one or two of you, how do you think, you know, the big social media companies are going to interact because they all seem to have a very strong interest in getting into the metaverse because that's where they see kind of the future trend of social interaction. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to, like, how is that going to work within the gaming environment? Kind of open it up, like, because I think it is a, a very trending topic and, and very relevant uh, as of today. Yeah. I don't know who wants uh, to kind of... I'll, I'll go quickly. Um, so I think, and I had this conversation with Philip Urzadel several times, I think the number one reason Second Life didn't become massive is because he did not want it to be a game, or he didn't want anything to be a game in it. Mm -hmm. If you look at Roblox, it's massive because you know you can you can create and you can play and all that. I mean, I think the the fact that that you know games are the ultimate metaverse, games are the ultimate social network, games are the ultimate community building uh, thing, and then you know you can have a very wide definition of what a game is and there's a lot of different things you can do you know in many many games you know people are go to the game and don't even play the game they just hang out with the community hang out with people Sorry. you know gta if you look at it most people just walk around yeah. uh, so so i think that that's that's kind of the so i think yes it's gonna it's it's gonna be the new social network and it will have game elements in it yeah. if you look at the whole thing like this whole nft craze and what has worked there and hasn't worked and i know frederick has his view on it then we'll talk about it but <laughs> i think the underlying value that people were really buying there they were buying the it's the velvet rope they wanted to be part of the club and now to keep these people in they are trying to deliver games to them so it's, it's kind of an interesting evolution of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah but the, the biggest difference between a social media platform and a game, I would say it's social media is by nature divisive and confrontative, if you've ever been to Twitter. I used to be active there, not so much anymore. I write a tweet every now and then. While the games industry is by nature collaborative and, and much more friendly and community building. Now, there are two types of games, and we need to remember that as well. One is finite games, which is like, more competitive in nature, like eSports, you have the FIFAs, you have the League of Legends, etc. Then you have the infinite games, you have the Minecrafts, you have the uh, Roblox that someone mentioned, that are by nature games where the only purpose of the game is to continue to play the game. And that's where you're going to see a lot of what we call the metaverse today, because the whole point is just collaborating with other people and building things. It's very creative, it's very allowing to... I'm not saying it's it's... It's heaven on earth because there are problems there as well. But the nature of the idea of the game is to collaborate. That's a perfect segue into my next question, which is basically um, how are users or individuals going to interact in the metaverse? And we've heard a lot about play to earn, uh, um, all, all sorts of watch to earn, live to earn, every sort of like earn walk possibility, to earn. walk to earn, <laughs> exactly. And, and the question is, is, you know, what, what of those earns is actually sustainable? What, what is actually a possibility to, to, to be, constitute something where, where individuals can really participate? And I don't think anyone's going to live to earn out of this, but, but be totally 
involved and, and really appreciate it and not, not just be a, a hey, a, a, a nice tag on, on a company. Yeah, yeah I think... Um I think the jury's still out, really. Um, there's a lot of great play to earn games out there which are still testing the boundaries and seeing where we're going to end up and what kind of framework we're developing. But, you know, and Steppen is a nice one as well, like Walk to Earn, which is, is an interesting, interesting concept. And, it, you know, it's working right now. Will it sustain the test of time? Uh, who, who knows? We'll see. So it's a bit of a mix of, mix of all of that. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, from my, from my point of view, there is uh, an interesting model called work to earn that, that we should also recover. Um, and I think that it has to do with that because one thing is belonging to a community and other different thing is also collaborating with the construction of that community. And if you are a, that, that kind of passive player, for example, you are not doing anything from my point of view that is related with the metaverse as we are understanding that something that is collaborative and that we are building together, but, but it's true. Some people are going to be passive, even in a very trying to be active environment like the metaverse, and some of them are going to invest their, their time, their talent, their thinkings, and I think there are going to be different ways of in incentivizing that and paying for that. I don't know, maybe it's going to be whatever to earn, but I think <laughs> at the end it's work. You have to work yeah. to earn whatever you want to earn. And if I'm the platform, I'm happy to have this kind of community that is working to earn whatever. Mm. Uh, that's my point of view. Now, I, I, think you, I think one of the things here that is important to remember is that most people exaggerate the idea that you should earn money. If I ask the audience, if you're listening, how many in here play a musical instrument, for example? No one? Yeah, a couple of you. How many actually make money from that? <laughs> right. Oh, we right. have one. Right. We have one. Yeah. Uh, which perfectly points at what I'm trying to say is that you do it because it's creative, not because you make money. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to appeal to the creative side of people, like yeah. allowing people to co-create and create by themselves and just be free. And that's what I think the metaverse is. And I think if you put the emphasis too much on making money, it turns into the world we're living in today. Yeah. And that's what we want, want to avoid because that's what we want to get away from, right? Yeah. I'll add to that. Like, <laughs> it's got to be passion, right? right You've got to be right. passionate about it. It's got to be fun as well. But to your point as well, like, it's work. And if, again, looking backwards, look at Web2, you know, the TikToks, the, the, the Twitch streamers, the YouTube streamers, like, Anybody can go on and do it, but to really be successful and, ha and seize that opportunity that Web2 gave us, yeah. you got to work. Like if you're a hardcore gamer, you're spending 14 hours a day and you're building up a community in your Discord chat. And that's now you're kind of making money and living off it, working to earn. So following that and then looking at Web3, it's going to be similar. It's going to be a place for us to run around and have fun, build community. But for those who want to seize an opportunity, for example, we're seeing this with Zed Run, our horse racing ecosystem. The people who are actually making money playing our game are the people who are putting in time and really playing. Like, it's, it's work to earn, to your point. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. But some people will make a living from it. You know, I have a very yes. strong view from yes. this, uh, this. I mean, if you actually play and earn, play to earn has been around for a long time. World of Warcraft, you know, yeah. at the famous, you know, gold mines in China with all the people. That was not very fun, but, you know, <laughs> those, you know people made a lot of money from that. Yeah. Um, I think that the way this is, this is really going to work, and games is like actually a bit more, you can, the higher percentage of people making a living or making a decent revenue from games, they would have it from YouTube or, or the creators, just because, uh, at least in free-to-play, you have actually an important number of players that invest a lot of money in their games, and they're happy to fund other players for their clan mm -hmm. or whatever to basically help them in the game do better or progress and all that. And we have to you know, realize, you know, I passed on the Axie Infinity seed stage, <laughs> seed round, uh, shortly after Sandbox. Because <laughs> when I looked at the bis uh, of the, the economic model, I was, like, I was like, I was telling Alex, who's the COO, like, this is not going to work. You know, you, you, you're, you're dependent on new players, it's not yes. going to work. But if you really think about it, as you, make the, if, if, if you do the shift from play to earn to play and earn, mm -hmm. you're going to realize that some of your top players are probably going to find people who are in, you know, in, in, in countries where there's you know, less revenue, where $300, $400 a, a month is a lot of money, and $300, $400, we have players in free-to-play that will you know, 
invest in their game thousands of dollars a month. So you can have, I think, a higher percentage of people that actually make a, a, a proper living. But it's a very difficult economy to balance. It's going to be very challenging. Yeah. I think, Chris, you touched on Web3. Mm. And I think, um, you know, for, for the general public, understanding how dynamic Web3 can be in the metaverse, which is, hey, interoperability, being able to exchange things. But I'd like to get your take on, on what is the current roadblock um, for, for mass adoption of Web3? Well, it's to what we spoke about before as well. We're very early. Like, and to your point, I like to ask people, how many, how many people own an NFT in this room? All right, that's very not little. many. How many people own crypto? A bit more, more, but still not many. But it's, that's, that's actually an impressive amount. But you need, you need to understand crypto before you can get an NFT, right? You can't just yeah. skip that. Yeah. You got to get the horse before the <laughs> cart, really, right? Uh, digital one as well, if you want. But, but, um, <laughs> but no, so the onboarding is a big problem. We're that early. Uh, I like to think that we're in the startup dial-up stage of uh, internet, yeah. like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and you know, it it's takes time, and you wait, like, you know, it takes forever, and somebody picks up the phone, and ah, fuck, the connection's lost, and yeah. we're back there, right? But with this next iteration and and so onboarding in terms of from our experience you know you need to have crypto and you need to do your kyc to get crypto then you need a metamask wallet and then you so the steps right. steps to fund time to fund which is important in games uh, yeah. is super important so we need to actually figure out the way to kind of do the heavy lifting behind the scenes for the mass consumers and um, and and do that you know create little wallets for them hold it for them uh, i don't think dapper labs is doing it the way that we want it to do, but they're experimenting their way. Yeah. And yeah, we have to figure out how do we can take away those teething onboarding issues and, and make it more efficient. So, yeah, there's over 2.5 billion video play, video game players. Correct. There's less than 10 million Web 3.0 mm. video game players. Just to give an idea <laughs> yeah. of how much at the beginning we are today. Yes. Yeah. And and, the, and maybe that leads me to the to one of my last questions is. Where's the business opportunity? Um, you know, where, where do you guys look to invest? What do you guys look to, to like, what's, where do you go, okay, this is where I'm going to put my money on um, mm -hmm. in, in the metaverse? Yeah, I mean, I, I can... Not in general, in the metaverse. Just in general. Yeah. Well, I would say in general, but... Yeah. but in general, of... I would say nuclear power, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with this discussion. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it for the audience rather than for myself. It's more, more interesting. Right now, if I was to do another startup, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. Crypto winter, whatever, Web3 uh, startup, Web3 game startup. A, even after everything that's happened, then happened, you'll raise a lot easier uh, the funds. And I think that's, that's where there's an opportunity. The, the business models are being invented. Um, there's, no, there's not many teams that actually know what they're doing. Uh, you can really jump into it, you know, having half a clue, which is when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. When you're an entrepreneur, first time entrepreneur, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but, and actually have a chance to succeed. You can build enough decent product and have a chance to succeed. In, you know, if you're trying to do a free-to-play video games today, I'm going to crush you. It's not going to work. If you're doing a Web3 uh, video game, you're going to be much faster than I can be because I have all these regulations for public companies to deal with, uh, which make me a lot slower. So I think that's the opportunity for the audience who wants to, um, to, uh, to be entrepreneurs is do, do Web3.0. Yeah. I mean, go ahead. Uh, personally, it's a creative, uh, creator community focused. I love uh, projects which actually embrace the community. I think Web3 is about embracing the community and giving and building alongside them and giving them the opportunity to build with you. And I think that's what, you know, Fortnite saw mm -hmm. early on. They, I mean, the story goes that they saw that people were hanging out after playing a game of Fortnite and just running around talking, right? They didn't want to play. They just wanted to hang out with their friends. And Roblox is the same thing, right? You're hanging out, but you can play. There is gamified elements in there. And so if you are building a startup or looking to invest in a startup, I would look at one that's, um, that's in, focused on community and bringing them along the ride. So it's like content creation. Like the best thing is you give them the tools and they create for you. And you can just, you know, lay back and watch uh, no. that great. <coughs> cool. Now, if I started from scratch with Web3 and all the new technologies in mind, I would be focused on uh, sports, actually, because there you have, <clears throat> for free, you already have the fan base. If you work with a sports team that is 
already active and out there. Uh, you have people willing to pay for stuff. You have people just yelling for more content. They're looking for it actively. So I would do an app or I would do something that supports sports team because in my um, experience, uh, having invested in a sports team myself, is that they lack a bit of business innovation and they're technologically a bit behind other companies. I would not go for gaming first because we're like at the spearhead mm -hmm. of technology in a totally different way. So it's harder, I would say, to do so that. So horse racing is a sport? Horse racing is perfect. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just one of them. <laughs> I, I remember in what Alexis was saying about digital identity, I think th there is a big potential mm. on the way you project your identity, not only in the digital, but in the physical. And the way you connect the physical and the digital, for me, is very powerful. If you are able to identify a community of people that is very focused now, today, in the physical, but you are able to create a utility that combines the physical and the digital, I think this is going to be... Mm. Uh, a, a winner horse in the future. <laughs> um, I think this is, this is going to be great, but you have to go to big communities because it's so difficult to start from scratch. Uh, we need a Web3 community, start from scratch. Why? You can move from yeah. Web2 to Web3. It's easier, but you have to think of the utility more in terms of, for example, you are in the digital space, why don't we go to the physical and we meet together, but we knew each other from the digital? That's an opportunity. Mm -hmm.